Today, let's quickly open our Bible to the book of Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 8 to 9. By grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is a gift of God. That is verse 8, verse 9. It says, not of works. Okay? Grace is different from works. Grace is different from laboring. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay? It says, not of works, not of laboring, lest any man should boast. So today we're going to be looking at a somewhat entitled How to Acquire Grace in these critical times. So what is grace itself? Grace, okay, is something you cannot pay for. It's something unmerited favor, unmerited blessing. Okay? Grace is an advantage, okay, it's an advantage that separates us from unbeliever, an unmerited, unmerited favor, unmerited blessing. What you cannot work for, then you receive it. That's why that test in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9, it says, not by works, not by laboring. Okay? It's a gift of God. So grace can be divine as an unmerited blessing. Unmerited favor. Something you didn't actually work for. John chapter 4 verse 38. It says, I will make you, okay, to reap where you have not planted. That is grace. Somebody else has labored. And you enter into their labor and begin to enjoy their labor. That is what they call grace. It's an unmerited favor, unmerited blessing. Something you cannot have actually, okay, merit by hand work either by qualification, either by hard work, either by labor, okay? You do not, you cannot merit it, okay? You cannot, God just give it. It's a gift from God himself. That is grace for you. We have two types of grace. We have universal grace, and then we have specific grace. What is universal? Universal grace is the unmerited favor that everyone who is on this earth is enjoying. Something like sun. Okay, sun, the breaching of air, the moon, all of this. Okay, uh, rain to water your, your plantation, all of this is a universal grace. Then we have the special grace. The special grace is, okay, those are the gifts of God to his own people, to his own children. Okay? The gift of God to his own children. Not for everybody. Okay? The sun is for everybody. The rain is for everybody. But that is what you call the universal grace. But the special one or the specific one is the one God gave to his own children because they belong to him. That is the second type of grace. So how do we acquire this grace? Number one, we acquire this grace by surrendering our life to Jesus, by accepting Jesus into our life. When you accept Jesus into your life, then grace comes with Jesus. Jesus will not just knock at your door and enter into your heart. When Jesus knocks at your door, according to Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, it will not just come ordinarily, it comes with grace. A kind of grace. Okay? The Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was nothing made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Verse 14. It said, This Word took on flesh, and drawn among us, and we, all of us, behind his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace. Okay, full of what? 
grace and of uh, truth. In Titus chapter 2, verse 11, it says, and I quote, The grace of God that bringeth prosperity, that bringeth healing, that bringeth protection as a peer. Okay? Will you receive him? When you receive Jesus into your life, you are receiving grace. So for us, okay, to enjoy grace this year, we must be close and close and have a real relationship with Jesus Christ. Not with human beings. I'm not saying we should not have a friend with human beings. So, grace comes when Jesus, when we accept Jesus Christ to our Lord and personal Savior, when we accept him into our life. Let's go to Titus chapter 2 verse 11. And then John chapter 1 verse 14. Titus chapter 2 verse 11. They are bringing salvation as appear to everybody. Okay? My ability to cure you of your cancer, to cure you of your poverty, is as a result or is occasioned by me accepting Jesus Christ, okay, as my Lord and personal Savior. On my own, I can't do anything, okay? Whatever power I'm manifesting today is as a result of me accepting Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. Can we go to the book of um, John chapter 14, verse 12? He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, okay, the works that I do, and he do also. That's what I'm saying. Shall he do also? So when a man of God performs miracle, there is no Jesus in him. It's so simple. When a man of God is having sex with you, there is no Jesus in him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the work that I do, shall he do also, and greater work than this, shall he do, because I go unto my Father. You can see now. So, when Jesus is in your life, is available in your life, grace is present. That's what I'm saying. It says, in Titus chapter 1, chapter 2, verse 11, it said, the grace of God that bringeth what is salvation? Salvation is salvation from poverty because poverty is a disease. When you are poor, you are sick. It's sickness. Because when you are poor, you should have hypertension. And then hypertension, you have sugar. From sugar, you go and die. It's a sickness. So don't... That is why... In Torah chapter 1, verse 2, it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health, even as thou so prosper. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, it means, okay, that automatically you have received a little bit of grace. And this you can, you can never be the same again with others. That's what I'm saying. You know, grace has category. Grace has level. But at least once we accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, that means you begin to enjoy and experience His grace. Those who will survive this year and those who carry grace, okay, or those who are connected to grace. Those are the two people that will, that will survive this year. Only two people. Those who carry grace and those who are connected to grace. 
Okay? If you cannot strike a fire, okay, and you are close to somebody who can strike a fire, you will see feel the heat. That's what I'm saying. Okay? You will see feel the heat. So Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 to 16. What is it saying? For the word of God is quick and powerful and, the, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to, to the, to the, the uh, dividing, dividing ascending of soul and spirit and of the joints and, and marrow. And it's a discerner of the soul. Go to verse 14. Go to verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great higher priest, that is passing into the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Continue. For we have not an higher priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto Underline the place. Verse 16. Let us don't worry, God bless you. He said, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace. Okay? That we may obtain mercy and find grace in this time of poverty. That's what it means. You see, the problem you have in this country, all over the world. You are not practicing Christianity. You are, okay, you are only bearing that title. Christianity is not a title, it's power. Okay? It's power. In Acts of Apostles chapter 3, the Bible says many of them were poor, but in Acts of Apostles chapter 4, when they accepted Jesus Christ and received the Holy Spirit, and do a lot of other things. He said no one among them was, was poor. The reason why you are poor is that your Christianity is not a Christianity. It's a show of failure. Okay? You cannot have Jesus in you and lack grace. When you accept Jesus Christ, when you come to the throne of Jesus and accept him as your Lord and personal Savior, and you begin to live according to his will, you begin to experience and operate in grace. That's what I'm saying. You know when, when, why we are suffering? It's because our Christianity is short-circuited. It's not the type of Christianity that Jesus wants us to practice, we are practicing. Grace means effortlessly. That is grace. Grace means effortlessly. That is grace. When you begin to use your own strength, your own power, it means grace is absent. And the Bible tells you in, in Titus chapter 2 verse 11. He said Jesus is grace. In John chapter 1 verse 14. He said Jesus is grace. In Hebrew chapter 1 chapter 4 verse 16. He said Jesus is grace. When you have this grace with you. Living with you. Totally living with you. You see. Born again. Is not removing your hearing. Born again. Is when. The word of God, which is Jesus himself, take total supremacy over your heart. That is born again. Born again is in the heart. When it's in your heart, it will transform to every part of your life. According to Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16, to survive at this time, that is what is written there, to survive at this time, is to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. You, you, when you accept him, 
Everything about you become Jesus. Everything about Jesus become about you. That's what I'm saying. The second way to act, okay, to acquire, I told you, grace as level. Grace as level. The second way to, to attain to attain grace or to acquire grace is by constantly studying the word of God. Okay? By constantly studying the word of God. Okay? Try peace me. Okay? Bit by bit of studying the word of God. Then your grace increases. Your grace cannot just increase by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. No. Your grace increases as you study God, Jesus himself, which is the word. Jesus and, and his word, they are the same thing. There is no difference between Jesus and his word. It's the same. Okay? There is no difference between the word and Jesus. Revelation says, Jesus is the word. John chapter 1 verse 1 says Jesus is the word. There's no difference. So, you see, the reason why some of us are poor is because this word is not living in our heart. This word, this word, okay, is outside of us. It's not in our heart. So, we don't have the, the, the power to create, to create wealth. Because what creates the heavens and the earth, what creates the wealth, is the word. They say without him was nothing made that was made. If this word is in you, and take total supremacy over your heart, okay, you, will be, you, you have a creative word in you, be able to create. In Psalm 33 verse 6, they say the word, he said, through, through his word, the heavens and the earth we are made. Psalm 33, verse 6. Through his word, which is Jesus Christ, the heaven and the earth we are made. And then in Isaiah 51, verse 16, he said, I have put this word in your heart and in your mouth so that you can create something. Be healed. Healing come. We are creating something. Be blessed. Money come, we are creating. It's not by time delay to the church that make you a Christianity, a Christian. What makes you a Christian is the amount of Jesus you have in your reservoir, which is the word of God. How do you acquire grace? An increase in grace, I said, by constantly studying the word of Second uh, Timothy chapter two verse fifteen. It says, "Study to show thyself approved." Okay, unto God a workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Studying to show thyself. Studying, okay, to show thyself. Then, if you look at. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3 from verse 14 to 17. He said, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. Continue. You have received Jesus Christ. Continue to learn about him. Okay? Continue to grow in him by studying the word of God. By studying it. But continue thou in the Things which thou hast learned and has been assured, okay, of, he said, and has been assured, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Verse 15, he said, and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. The Holy Scriptures means Jesus, the Word of God, which are able to make thee wise. Unto salvation. Okay? Through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Verse 16. It says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, 
in righteousness, verse 17, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all kind of works. When you receive Jesus into your heart, Exodus 31, verse 1 to 3, he said, you will have the grace how to know how to do as a carpenter, to do the best kind of chair. Okay? When you have Jesus in you. When you have Jesus in you, you have grace in your husband's house. Within a week, your husband will just be praising you. Maybe once in three months, you just have one small skirmishes. But he has no grace. Any movement to do, there's a mistake. And then you say, my husband does not love me. But you know why? You don't carry grace. That's why your husband does not love you. No grace. If you want to multiply your grace, increase in grace, acquire grace, you need knowledge. Okay? You can see now, you say grace can be multiplied. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you to the epignosis. It's a Latin word. Epignosis means deep knowledge. Deep knowledge. To the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Yes. According as his divine power has given unto you, unto us, all things. The more grace you acquire, the more property you acquire. That's what I'm saying. According as divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life. Okay? What are the things that pertain to life? Good husband, good wife, good house, good car, good school, certificate, visa, all of this, good health, I think that pertain to life. Plus godliness. Car is not godliness. That's why they say, and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us unto glory and virtue. So, for us to acquire grace and increase in that grace, we must study the word of God bit by bit, okay, verse by verse, and page by page. So, that is another way to study, I mean, to increase in grace. If you want to also increase in grace, Okay, constant prayer and fasting will also, okay, make you acquire grace or increase in grace. Constant prayer and fasting will also make you increase. You know, the more grace you have, the more power you have. That's what I'm saying. The more grace you have, First Samuel chapter 2 verse, verse 9, it says, man's strength is useless, but with grace, all things are possible. Grace, okay, can bring down mountain. That's what I'm saying. The more you acquire grace, the more you acquire goods. The more you have power to acquire goods. Okay? So, when you learn how to constantly pray and fast, not all the time, grace begins to multiply. Let's go to Mark chapter 9, 27. Yes? Continue. When he came to the house, Jesus, the, Bible, the, the member, I mean the disciples, asked Jesus, why can't we do this miracle that you do? And he said unto them, this kind of miracle cannot be performed, yes, without fasting and uh, prayer. See my mouth. You don't come here with oily mouth. Through constant prayer and fasting, grace come. More grace will come. Another way grace also come, number four, is through sacrifice. Okay? Through sacrifice, grace comes. When you give an acceptable sacrifice, Grace come. 
Okay? You that cannot do all of this, through sacrifice, you can connect to grace. Through sacrifice, you can connect to Jesus. You can connect grace. You can walk in grace. First King chapter chapter 17 or so. Let's read from verse 11. Let's read from verse 8 to 12. God commanded a widow in Zarephath to feed, to feed Elijah, okay, maybe for three and a half years. But the, the, the worst part of thing is that the person God commanded to feed Elijah by herself was about to die because he only had one bread. After she finished eating this bread, according to the scripture, she herself and the baby will die. If you look at verse 9, you see her eyes get to the Zarephath, which belonged to Sidon, and dwelt there. Behold, I have commanded a widow, a widow woman, there to sustain thee. Verse 10. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering a stick, gathering of stick. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And verse 11, and as he was going to fetch the water, he called, he called her back again. He called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread and the hand in the hand. Verse 12, and she said to the man of God, she said to her, he says, and, and, says, and she said, as the Lord that God liveth, okay, I have not a cake, but a cup of meal in a barren and a little of a cruise. And behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat and do what? And die. That is the person God sent. Elijah to somebody that has no two bread, only one. Once he finishes this bread, he must die. But for the woman to connect to the grace of Elijah, of God upon him, he has to give the major thing. The major thing. If I'm giving something, I always give what I love most. That's what I, I do. So that it will pace me. Either to pray more or to take an action. So you can see, if you look at that verse 12, verse 13, and Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make, make me, make me therefore a little cake force. The one you want to eat, give me force. After this woman gave what she has, let me really finish for you. First King chapter 17, verse 13. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first. And bring it unto me. And after, after make for thee and for their sons. Okay? Verse 14. For those says the Lord, God of Israel, the barren of me shall not waste. They shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord send death rain. Three and a half years. The woman feed and feed with her son. So, through sacrifice, you can connect to grace. You can receive grace. If you look at 1 Kings chapter 3 from verse 1 to 5 to 10, Solomon was a lazy man. He was not, he was not a wise man. But the Bible says, 
In Gibeon, he gave God 1,000 goats. And in the night, God appeared to him. He said, what do you want? He says, I'm a foolish man. I need wisdom. God said, receive wisdom, receive wealth, receive protection. Is that not grace? Titus chapter 2 verse 11. You say grace. Say the grace of God that bringeth wealth, wisdom, salvation, as appeared. That is what I'm saying. Nothing more than that. God will help us. Call plus 234-803-846-3326 to book an appointment with the Son of Man today.